Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And today we're going to do the November 2023 layout update. And I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, he's actually doing the November update early. I am doing the November update early because Thanksgiving uh, is going to be the last, you know, kind of weekend here in the month. And there's all kinds of family fun and whatnot scheduled. So um, just going to get this to you. Uh, before the festivities because I don't really know what's going to happen as far as uh, all that excitement and I might not get to it by the end of the month and I wouldn't want to leave you without an update. So um, the first update here is probably going to upset a few of you that were curious on the decaling for the custom locomotive and I had a reason for not doing a video on this um and that is because uh i've never done it before and i wasn't sure how it would work out um so you're looking at the locomotive here right now obviously and it has its uh, logo on it um which not a problem uh except yeah uh, stop them here for those of you who are in the print uh, industry, you probably know that inkjet printers don't print white. Um, what they do is they rely on the white of the paper. Well, I have a logo that is light, and because the inkjet printer doesn't print white, when I printed it on the decal paper, which I can tell you is a Koala brand paper, I found it on Amazon, I think it was 20 sheets, 8.5 by 11 for like 12 bucks, 11 bucks, something like that. So, reasonably priced. Um, what you do is you put in your printer, you print out whatever it is you want to print, um, and then you spray it with three uh, coats of either a gloss or a matte varnish. Um, then you cut it out. It's a water slide decal paper. So just like all your other decals, you put it in water for like five, ten seconds, uh, and the decal slides right off. It's really nice. It works really, really well. And then I applied it with the Microsol and Micro, uh, yeah, the Microsol uh, solution. Uh, it's a two-part. I have both parts. I can't remember what the other one is, but anyway, um, and it, it forms right to the to the model, so it's really great. Um, but if you're doing a dark logo, it'll print the dark logo because you're not relying on the white. If you're printing a lighter logo, even in a gray, uh, it needs a white background on the model because it's not going to print that white. So after I printed out the logo, what I ended up having to do was mark out where that logo was and then paint a white area on the locomotive that actually had that, um, you know, where that was going to fit and then transfer the decal. Um, I don't know that I'm happy with the way that it's turned out, um, even after I've touched up the paint. Um, so I may still be looking for uh, other options. Uh, and that includes, instead of printing it at home, maybe actually having somebody print it for me. Um, but right now, this is... This is kind of what the locomotive is going to look like until I do that. Um, and until I decide fully what I want to do, that's what the logo looks like. So that got done here in November. Okay, we also this month picked up a new locomotive. And I know what you're thinking. Did you really need one more locomotive? And the answer is we don't talk about need when it comes to model rail ready. It's... You see something, you like something, you buy something. Um, so under that principle, uh, yes, I guess if that constitutes need, I needed uh, this locomotive. This is a um, beautiful Atlas High Hood uh, in Conrail. It is part of their Gold Masterline series, obviously, uh, with sound because that's what we do. Um, and... Uh, it was probably, uh, out of the box, one of the nicer locomotives I had as far as running right out of the box. I didn't have any issues with cleaning the tires. Not cleaning the tires, cleaning the wheels. Um, so that was kind of cool because all of my other Atlas locomotives have had a lot of factory residue that's needed taken care of. Uh, but the detail is nice, the printing is nice. Uh, nothing, it's not a scale trains model, but it does look really nice as far as um, you know, being one of the few high hoods that I have, um, and even, even more spectacular is, you know, it's Conrail, and I do love the Conrail Big Blue locomotives. So, added this baby to the fleet here this month, 
And I'll be honest with you, there are quite a few locomotives that Atlas is getting ready to release um, that have my attention. And so I'm going to be adding quite a few more locomotives, I think, uh, in the next couple of months as they come in. And yes, we are still waiting for the Cato Big Boy with sound. Um, they keep pushing off when it's going to be delivered. I think right now it's January, so we'll see if it actually comes in January. Also adding to the roster is the NS. This is a Microtrains gondola, and it's hiding behind the trees there, but got that and picked up two more of these Atlas uh, Master Line. These are cement hoppers, and if you recall, I did pick up quite a few of those, three to be exact when I was at the train show in Altoona. Um, and uh, they were running these basically 50% off online and they are absolutely gorgeous models. So I figured, well, what the heck, I might as well get them. And there they are, they look fantastic. So added those to the fleet. Uh, also picked up some road signs here. This is just Blair lines, they're basic Road signs, nothing crazy, but we're ta we've been talking about details, and it's time to detail some more scenes. So there they are. And in that, I picked up, and once again, these were all on sale. This is why I got this stuff, is because they're running the sale uh, online. And these are some street lamps that, uh, they're for parking lots, but I think they're going to be just high enough to use in the intermodal yard. So I'm going to throw these in the intermodal yard. Um, they're nice because they have everything you need with them. So... Uh, the resistors are all included, and yes, you did see that is Atlas. So we're going to stack those up against the Woodland Scenics, who kind of took over the market with their uh, just plug-and-play system. So we'll see how these interact with that. Okay, if you watched my last video about the detailing uh, of the layout, you know that I had number 8774, number 3404, and then way up the line here, number 660 all in a consist and i had the 3404 uh trailing as a distributed power unit and you're saying okay well yeah i saw that what's the point well the point was i broke the consist apart um because i took that train off the track um well i put it in this put the cars back in the yard needed a place to put the locomotives and i was going to move them into locomotive storage here um but this is a big but but what happened was um, all of a sudden, 8774 became non-responsive. Well, that's not entirely true. All of the sounds responded, um, but the locomotive didn't move. And I reset the locomotive. I did everything I could with it, and it's still, the sounds would rev up, but the train wouldn't, the locomotive wouldn't move. Um, and I went, huh, that's, that's really odd. So it had no functions on. Nothing was, was wrong with it as far as, like, you know, that I could tell. So I said, okay, well, let's, you know, it was running fine under the reset of address of 03. It wasn't until I changed it to 8774 that it stopped running. So, okay, so I took it. Um, so I knew the motor was working, and I knew the decoder was working. Um, long story short, after about an hour of troubleshooting, Although F9 was not showing as pressed, the locomotive was reading as though I had an engine hold set. Uh, and so it was set at zero because it hadn't been moving. And so I could rev the engine up all the way to notch eight and get nothing out of it because the engine hold was on. And the way I found out and the way I noticed it was... Um, when you go through the cycle and you, you start up the locomotive uh, and it completes, when you put it the reverser into whatever direction you're heading um, and you throttle up, the engine goes through its cycle and then you hear the air brake release. Well, I wasn't getting the air brake release sound. And so I was like, I wonder if, like, why it's not kicking the brake off. Well... The reason it wasn't kicking the brake off was because of the engine hold. So once I cycled it, even though it wasn't on, I put it on, took it off. Lo and behold, it ran just fine. So if you have a locomotive that does that to you and it's not part of a consist um, and it, you don't know why it's not functioning properly, just toggle your engine hold just in case. Don't know how it got on, don't know why it was on. But even after the reset, 
the command station and everything still recognized that that button at some point had been pressed. Um, I always, of course, blame user error, so it's probably me at some point. But just in case you're wondering, that could be one of the problems if you're having to shoot with your locomotive. Okay, so for actual modeling that I did, um, I did get um, another order of uh, showcase miniature signals in, uh, a total of 25 signal heads. Now, that's not going to make 25 signals because, you know, I calculated which are double heads and et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's going to be, you know, it's, I think it gets me another 15 or 16 signals out of that. But uh, the point of the matter is um, I do have uh, some uh, signals that are going to be coming up here. Unfortunately, I can't clear my workbench. If you recall, I mentioned briefly in the last video that I had a commission that I was working on. I'm still working on that commission. Find that you spend a lot more time building models when they're for somebody else. And so until that commission is complete, uh, I can't really work on anything else. But it's almost done. It is almost done. Uh, and I will show you that. That'll probably make... It might make the December update, but it'll definitely make the January update, if not December. But let's talk about what I actually modeled on the layout. And I went back through here and I modeled some more melted snow. Uh, I really like modeling that melted snow with the AK Interactive products. I think it looks really, you know, cool, but especially in the rails where you can sort of have it melting. Um, so I cleaned this scene up a little bit. I actually added some more snow to the, the full-on snow, uh, did the trees a little bit uh, better. I wanted to get... Uh, it, the snow just needed fluffed a little bit. So I fluffed the snow in this front scene just to get that. Uh, I wanted to have this area here in front of the tunnels uh, a little bit better. Uh, so I, I, I put some snow there to get that done. Uh, and then actually came around the back here. And there was some, some damaged snow in the back here. So I fixed all that and then... Uh, this this area by and large was fine, but when I came down here, my snow transition was a little bit rough. So I started reworking this just a little bit, um, and you'll notice there's a little bit more snow here now. So um, not going to do too much more scenery wise because I still need to be able, able to get into my electric panel, um, which I can do. Like this will open, and I can it slides all the way out. You can do what you got to do in here, um, but there's all this section also comes out. I just you know. Why damage the scene if you don't have to? But um, the uh, snow for right now, this is pretty much done. Um, and, and the scene is pretty much done. I'm going to add some trees outside of the door swing area here. And uh, this is, we're, we're, we're good here now. So moving on. Okay, so you may have noticed that my yard down here is just a little bit busy in Allegheny. There's a lot of train uh, here. Um, and that's because I pulled everything out of staging and I brought it all up uh, front. The only thing that's in staging now is the uh, oil tank train and the two maintenance trains. So the CSX with the ties and the crane and then the, um, uh, the welded rail train is in staging. And everything else is off the layout because what I've been doing a lot this month, and I didn't record any of it, it was just simply for me, I've actually been running my layout, right? So I've been running my layout, trying to figure out some operating things, how the signals are going to work and all that sort of stuff when I get down that far. But in the process of doing all that, what I realized is I have too much stuff. Um, and I know that all of us model railroaders never have enough space for all of our stuff. But I'm showing you these beer can tank cars because I took these cars, I bought the gold medal, uh, upgrade kits, so I detailed them out. I really like these cars, but I have no reason for them on the layout. Like, they don't really serve. I, I don't have any industry that needs them. So, um, what I've been doing is I've been going through and I've been trying to figure out which cars I need, which cars I don't need, you know, which cars are, you know, on, on the layout that, you know, I like them, but I don't need them. So, here's, here's a good example. I have... You know these these large hoppers. Uh, so a Conrail. We got this this. Uh, it's an ACFX um, and, and, a, and a Burlington Northern Santa Fe, uh, and even these CSX. Like these are too large for the only industry in my on you know, my layout that receives uh, covered hoppers, which is the cement plant. So 
Like, while these smaller ones are fine, uh, these bigger ones, I, I don't have an industry for them. So do I really need them on the layout? You know, the box cars. I got, I got a load of box cars. Uh, there's just a ton of them on the layout. I have a number of industries that need them. So some of this stuff is great. I can put it into, um, you know, I can put it into storage or I can put it in an industry, let's say, and it serves a purpose. You know, the other thing is here, passenger trains. I've got more passenger trains than I have terminal space for. Um, I have more locomotives than I have cars for. And I know there's at least, uh, I know that the, uh, the Dash 8s, um, is one of the locomotives that I'm looking at because Atlas is releasing them in with sound. So this one doesn't have sound. So, I mean, you know, going to have to add those, right? So knowing that all this stuff is coming out, what I'm getting at is I am looking at what I need on the layout, um, what I want to keep as far as, you know, I'm not getting rid of any locomotives. So if anybody saw locomotives and you're like, ooh, maybe he's getting rid of a not getting rid of a locomotive. Um, but there might be some cars that I get rid of. And so what I need to decide is, I, am I going to get with, rid of them as they are, or am I going to weather them and sell them as a finished product? I don't know yet. Uh, I haven't decided um, because that's one of the things that I'm going to start doing is weathering um, cars and box cars and stuff like that and then offering them, them for sale. So uh, until I get into that and actually get that sort of uh, facet of the hobby off the, um, you know, off the ground, I've got a surplus of stuff and I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. So I've been trying to figure out what I need, what I don't need, uh, and then I'm going to go from there. And, you know, one of the things that I have is what, what <laughs> in the real world, this would be a revenue car, right? You know, moving new automobiles. But on my layout, um, these scale trains, auto racks, they're beautiful. I have a place for them to go, um, you know, where they sit on the layout. But once they leave here, um, signifying that they've been either loaded or unloaded, I have nowhere else in the layout for them to go, so they basically make an appearance and then they disappear. So um, let's go back and look at staging and I'll show you what's going on back there and what I'm thinking. Okay, so we're back here at the staging yard and I want to show you a long view of the staging yard. All right, let me know when you see the problem. You see it yet? Yeah, it's full. I've got the CSX maintenance rate train. Uh, up here and it's pretty much uh an entire section i've got the welded rail train um broken out over two tracks let's just take a moment to look at that because you know it's cool it's awesome everybody should have one and then we got the oil train in the background and that's it i got they got no more staging space so that's that's not gonna work and i already took some locomotives off the layout once again, I, I, I'm not getting rid of these. Um, I love these locomotives. And, you know, there's a Cato, and that, that's, that's actually an Atherin that's, that's buried in there, but he's kind of hiding among the Catos. And I, I think this is a Fox Valley. You know, so it's kind of, it's unique in the Mayersk uh, scheme. And then, you know, SD40-2s, which you know I love, except these two. He's Broadway Limited. I hate these two. Um, so maybe I'll get rid of those, but let, let's not, let's not trash Broadway right now. Um, they're, uh, this one, this is a Broadway limited one out of three. I love this look, the Southern locomotive. It's, it's great. Uh, these two, not so much, uh, but, um, that's not why I'm, we're back here to talk about. So I don't really know, uh, what I can do to get more track. Um, I have thought about adding another couple of tracks down here um, that would sort of just act as places to hide trains, full trains. Um, these two would be the um, tracks that would be up to the uh, staging. And then my helpers, I would like to build a helper pocket somewhere back here in this mess. Um, but it's not really necessary. So, you know, if I don't, not the worst thing in the world. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I really don't have a staging area right now because I've, I've, I've filled it up. So I need to, I need to get that, that fixed. And what I'm thinking is the space behind me uh, is where my furnace is. And there's actually probably three or four feet behind the furnace. Eh, it's probably closer to three. Um, and boy, that would be a great place for hidden staging. Uh, it would be a stub-ed yard. It wouldn't be able to run all the way around. 
um, because when you when you come over in this direction, you know, I, I there's a water heater. I'm not going to move that washer and dryer. Can't really do much there. So, yeah, but 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 uh, that might that might be an option. So it's not a necessity right now. I'm just going to keep you know taking out the items that don't fit necessarily and. Um, we're going to recycle through it, but, um, here are the showcase miniature signals. Look at all those signal heads ready to go rock and roll. So, um, I will tell you just a, just a quick shout out. They've been, they've been really great to work with. Um, haven't actually had to talk to them on the phone. It's been all, uh, either email and, or, you know, right through the website. Um, but, uh, they, they shipped these components. Uh, they didn't have the, um, the 25 LEDs that I needed. Uh, they were back ordered, um, and then within I think it was probably about a week, uh, maybe it was even less than a week. Uh, they showed up, you know, separate. There was a little note there saying, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry, they're back ordered. We'll ship them out to you separately." But they already sent me these. So if I didn't have a commission down here that I'm not showing you, um, I'd have, I'd have been able to get them built and just wait for the LED. So that was pretty cool. So um, you know, if you're if you're looking for signals. These these are these are really nice and and it's like I said customer service has been great uh, working with them so uh, in any event um, staging yard got a problem not sure I'm going to fix it yet working on it till then uh, might be pulling some stuff off the layout so if you see a favorited train or one that's constantly running around you're going to start seeing some things get shuffled up because I spent a lot of the month playing with my trains and it's kind of a novel idea but that's where we're at. Okay, that is going to do us here for November. Didn't get much else done. Um, not sure how December's going to look because it's got the holidays in there and, you know, it's just sort of a busy time to... Hobbies don't make it uh, make a priority. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, that'll probably be my next video. If I get a moment, um, I will record some of... Um, my train playing, so to speak, uh, to show you what I'm doing operation-wise, um, and we'll just take a look at that um, from you know the operational standpoint. Um, so it'll probably be a coal train is the next thing I'm working on. So um, we'll take a look at that. Otherwise, I will see you for the end of the year wrap, and uh, the first video in uh, we'll do a December wrap up. Um, you know, new new update, and then we'll do first thing in January. Uh, we'll do a full layout tour again. Okay, everybody, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back here in December.